I just wanted to drop in this morning. As you can see, I haven't even shaved yet, but I've been, I was going through all my emails and I was going through all the information that I had. And uh, I thought, well, maybe I needed to take a few minutes and uh, share with you all uh, some of the things that are going on here and what's going on around the world. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails from people who are telling me, uh, you know, what do you think about uh, having church services and, uh, and things like that. Now listen, as a pastor, I think pastors have to make decisions. And I'm not, and I'm not going to tell a pastor what to do. But what I do want to say is I want to show you something in Scripture that I think is very, very important. In, in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Leviticus, there is a story and there are, there are actions that are taking for leprosy. Leprosy is very contagious. And uh, the person with leprosy, they would bring them in and they would check and see if they had leprosy. And they had a test. It, sometimes it would go over 10 days. The test had to do with whether there was an infection part, a hair growing in it. It was different things. Well, if the person had leprosy, they separated them out of the camp. They took them away from the camp, didn't allow them to associate with others. Now, in the process of this, once they, if they were healed, they could go back to the priest, prove to the priest that they were healed. To me, as I look at this uh, virus, which is extremely contagious, I don't want to associate and say it's leprosy. I don't want to do that, and don't anyone say that I said that. But what I do want to say is, I think when we're looking for biblical principles why we should do something, we see that God gives us an answer for everything. And it's whether or not we're willing to accept that answer. Now, as a pastor, because of the fact that I believe that I would want to protect my people and I would make sure that no one else could have this happen to them, I would look for other ways to have services. And I want to tell some of you pastors some of the things that I'm finding out that from individual pastors that they're doing. A lot of pastors are having drive-up services. They seem to work. Uh, I've got some good response back for some preachers saying that they've had good crowds. Uh, many of them are using the internet. Our home church uses the internet. And I, I talked to uh, the associate pastor the other day, and he told me, he said, you know, Brother David, he said, our, all of our tithes and offerings are coming in. We're meeting our budget. And uh, people, people that love your church are going to support your church. People that love you as a pastor. It's kind of like, you know, it, it's like, it's loving and caring, realizing that as an under-shepherd, you, you really don't want anything to happen to any of your people. I, I protect, I'm, I'm sheltered in here in my home. I don't like not being able to go where I want to go and do what I need to do, but I have to stay here for if I don't stay here, there's a good possibility my wife and I could get sick. And then there's two things that would take place off of that. If I got sick, I'd have to go to the hospital. There's a possibility I could die. Now, God is in charge. And he knows how long I'm going to be around. But the Bible says not to tempt the Lord thy God. Don't put God in the situation that he has to do something that he shouldn't have to do. And so uh, I'm trying to take care of myself. I go to, we went to the store yesterday. I had to go down to VA yesterday to get blood tests. And I wore a thing on my face and I had my gloves on and everything else to protect myself. My wife the same way. Uh, this morning we went out and had our walk, and there's several people out there walking. We walked, they kept their six feet of distance, we kept ours, and we kept on walking. The idea is to try to end this, and the only way we're going to end this is people got to work together. And I, and I want to make another point on this. Stubbornness never gets you anywhere. Being stubborn doesn't get you anywhere. Standing for what's right. Let me, let me make a suggestion. And I'm not telling anybody what to do. I think right now what we need to do more than anything else is to love people, uh, to share with them that Jesus Christ loves them, that Jesus Christ cares about them, that Jesus Christ is there for them. You know what? And I don't think it has to do with a church building. I think it has to do with people, the personal relationship that we have with people. You know, uh, there are people that are militant. There are people that are loving. There are people that are caring. I, I believe in rules. 
And, I, and I've lived by rules all my life since I've been a child of God, even prior when I was in the military. But the whole fact boils down, I still think you've got to have a balance. And, and if, if a pastor or if a church is worried about their finances in their church, remember this, what the scripture says, that Jesus said that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church of God. If God is in it, he'll take care of it. God will take care of it. So we have to trust God, just like all the people out there right now. This is tough. This is tough on families. I mean, we have in our neighborhood, we've had two or three people that have already uh, putting their stuff out on the front yard and selling it or, or just leaving it because they're going to have to leave their rental home. I mean, this is tough on the American people. And as a pastor... I don't want to make it tougher for them. I want them to realize, hey, listen, we love them. We're here for them. We have the internet. We have all this access right here that we can talk with people. I have people email me all day long. They send me emails, send me different things. What do you think about this, preacher? What do you think about that? Friends, listen to me. We are in a situation right now that we have to do all we can to stop it. And so my suggestion, and, and this is just my suggestion, and you can use all the biblical truth you want that the house of God you're supposed to assemble every week and do all this. You can use anything you want to use. You can make the word of God say whatever you want it to say. But the question is this. What would God do? What would Jesus do? What would he do? What would he do in these circumstances? Do you think he would bring in the masses in, into him knowing that every single one of them would get sick? I don't think so. I don't think he'd do that. What would Jesus do? He may separate them, keep them six feet apart. <laughs> he may do that. I don't think Jesus would want to bring all those people together where they could get sick. I don't think so. Now, we know that our relationship with God is, is eternal if we're saved. And, I, and to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. The reality is this, is that I know where I'm going to go when I die. But I also at the same time, I don't want to rush it. And I don't want to hurt anybody else. And the thing that keeps coming to my mind, and it really comes to my mind, several years ago, and I'll give you an illustration. Several years ago, I was pastoring a church, and a lady came in to my church, and she said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay. And we went in and sat in the office. She said, I've got a problem. And I said, what's your problem? She said, I think my husband is molesting my children. I said, wow, are you sure? I think so, she said. So I said, well, you know what we need to do? We need to find out for sure. Then we'll see about getting some help. So I asked her to bring the children by, and we sat there. And these were not really young kids. These were a little older kids. And I talked with them in front of her, and I was convinced after these kids had talked that the father wasn't doing right by the children. So I told her she needed to go down, and she needed to report the situation to the police department. And she said, but that's going to put him in jail. I said, let me ask you a question. Do you want him to continue to hurt your children? Or do you want to stop it? It's up to you. I can only make a suggestion. You know, and she turned around and she said, all right. So she did go down and she talked to the police department. And, and the police department came out and investigated. The man was put in jail and got 20 years in jail for molesting his children. Why? because he was doing wrong. You know, she came to me later and she said, I know that it really hurt Pastor to do that, but it was the right thing to do. Let me tell you something right now. The right thing to do as a man of God, as believers, is to try to do all we can to save as many lives as we can to keep them, to keep them safe. Not just safe in health, but try to get them to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their savior, and so that if they were to die, they know where they're going. That's what import, what's important. My friends, I hope today that I've helped you. I don't mean to stir up anything, but I've got so many emails from people. What's your opinion, Pastor? My opinion for me personally is this. If I was pastoring a church right now, and I had a large congregation, I would not have them all come together and sit in the same building. I would not do that. I would have them maybe come with an outside church, with car church, or whatever you want to do, have a drive-up church. But I would never have them come all down, sitting together. I would think that if something was to happen to them, 
wow, my feelings. Jesus said, my sheep I know. They love me. They follow me. As a pastor, people look up to the pastor. They look up to the man of God. They want the man of God's opinion. So sometimes the man of God has got to go someplace where not everybody else wants to go and has to say, what is best for this congregation? What is best for these people? My, my belief through the Word of God is to teach them the Word of God, to share the Word of God, and make it available to them. I think, I personally believe this, that I think we're going to see more people at, through this come to Jesus Christ than we've seen in a long time. I really believe that. This is not over yet, folks. This could go on for a while. And we better keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and remember that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, you may get upset with me for saying this to you, but that's okay. I love you. I'm just giving you what I believe the scripture says. Very clear in the scriptures that when there was a pandemic, when there was a problem, the word of God, the, church, the people, the Old Testament people separated them, separated them. I go overseas. And I'm in, I'm in countries where leprosy is at. They still separate them. They still do not allow them. To, you go into leper co colonies. I was in Phnom Penh uh, two years ago, and there was an HIV place there, and that was totally separated from everything else. Folks, we don't put other people in danger because we want to have a service. Hey, that's not going to help. That is not going to help. What we need to do is get them saved. And, and make sure that they know that we love them and we care about them. Amen. God bless you folks. I appreciate you all. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I pray this morning that I've helped some folks to understand what's important and what is what should be done. I can't make decisions for pastors and I wouldn't dare do that. But I think that I think sometimes we need to stop and think about what we're doing and look at the cause and look at the effect. How is this going to affect other people? How is this going to affect my church? How is it going to affect a lot of people? Every situation we make, everything we do is, is, is scrutinized. Everything. And God, we want to bring honor and glory to you. We want to honor you in every way. And the only way we can do that is sometimes we just have to stop and think what is best? What would Jesus do in these circumstances? Thank you so much, Father, for loving us. If there's one that's listening that's not saved, that's never trusted you as their Lord and Savior, I pray right now they bow their head, close their eyes and say, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry for my sin. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Please save me. Please give me life eternal. Lord Jesus, I love you. I, I need you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I believe that if you've prayed that prayer that you have made uh, your knowledge known to God that he loves you and that he cares about you and that he will save you. You ask, that's all you have to do. You just ask and he shall receive. Uh, I'll try to step in again to maybe a couple times during the weeks to uh, bring you up to date, but we love you guys and appreciate the number. Uh, I looked this morning, we have over 5,000 followers and that's that's one of I don't deserve even this opportunity. I, I'm so humbled by all of you folks. I really am to know that God has given me a little ministry that I can share and talk and be honest with people. I hope that you listen to the message that I put out on pandemics. That is really an important message for you to look at because it talks about the past, the present, in the future on, on what God's word has to say about pandemics. Please listen to that message. It's here. It's also on YouTube. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Until the next time, this is Dave Smelt signing off. Keep a smile on your face, a song in your heart, and go and tell someone about Jesus today, for he loves you. God bless you, my friends. Amen. <laughs>